I never imagined that my life would take such a peculiar turn when I woke up this morning. Yet here I am, standing in front of the mirror, seeing my reflection, me, Chris, in a dress, and not just any dress, but a prom-style, pink one that glimmers with every breath I take. My friend's hands work diligently at my back, securing the laces with a precision that suggests she's done this before. Now, I think it's only fair to tell you what I'm about to do, she says, her voice a mix of mischief and challenge. Her hands don't falter, even as I try to glance over my shoulder. Yes, I'm lacing you into this dress, before you head off on your day of Dollar Tree. A scoff escapes me. Dollar Tree in this getup. She must be kidding. But the glint in her eyes tells me she's not. What's a prom princess doing in a dollar store? She continues, her hands pulling the laces tighter. Well, Adam, I hope you have a good answer in store for them. Me. Answering to bewildered onlookers as I peruse aisles for household goods. The thought is absurd, yet oddly thrilling. Of course, you'll be tempted to back out. Boys like you really can't stick to a challenge, she teases, tying off the laces with a final tug. I can't help but feel the slightest bit defiant at that, my pride pricked by her taunting. So I'll make it easy for you. A triple knot and a dab of super glue back here. My eyes widen. She's truly ensuring there's no escape from this whimsical imprisonment. After all, I spent a fortune on this dress. Let's make it worth every penny. And with those final words, I step into the sunlight, the skirt swishing around my legs, my heart racing with the absurdity and the hidden thrill of the dare. This is going to be a day to remember. Taking a deep breath, I push the door open and step outside. The sunlight catches the fabric of the dress, making it shimmer in a way that makes me feel like I'm the main character in a storybook. I can feel the breeze playfully tugging at the hem, reminding me with every step that this is not just an ordinary day. As I walk down the street, I feel the weight of every gaze. Heads turn, whispers follow me like a shadow, and I swear I can hear the click of a camera from somewhere behind. But with each step, my initial embarrassment transforms into something else, a strange sense of empowerment. I'm breaking norms, and the shock factor is almost exhilarating. The first true test comes when I reach the dollar store. The automatic doors slide open, and I'm hit with a cool blast of air conditioning. For a moment, I hesitate, but then I remember the triple knot and the dab of super glue at my back. There's no going back now. What's a prom princess doing in a dollar store? A child asks, tugging at his mother's hand as they pass by me in the aisle filled with cleaning supplies. I kneel down to his level, smiling beneath the absurdity of it all. Even princesses need to shop for bargains sometimes, I say with a wink. His laughter is a bright sound, and it eases some of my tension. I make my way through the aisles, gathering the items on my list. Some people avert their eyes, and others look on with curiosity, but no one dares to say anything negative. Perhaps they see the confidence I've mustered, or maybe they're just respecting my choice of attire for the day. At the checkout, the cashier tries to hide her surprise, but her eyes give her away. I lean in slightly and say with a conspiratorial whisper, it's for a bet. She laughs, and we share a moment of genuine connection. As I place my final item on the checkout counter, the calm routine of the store shatters. Three men burst through the entrance, their movements quick and sharp, a stark contrast to the playful lightness I felt up to this point. They wear masks and carry what appear to be guns, and the entire store falls into a stunned silence. One of them shouts for everyone to get down, and the sudden danger snaps everyone back to reality. The thrill of my cross-dressing adventure fades into a chilling fear. I comply, my heart pounding, the skirt of my pink dress spreading out on the cool tile floor. They move through the aisles, their steps confident and heavy. I keep my head down, trying to make sense of the situation, when one of the robbers notices me. Look at this, he calls out to his accomplice, pointing at me. We've got royalty here. You're coming with us, princess, he sneers, gripping my arm and pulling me to my feet. The fabric of my dress rustles loudly in the eerie silence of the store now filled with tension and fear. As they drag me toward the front, one of them comments, keep it quiet, lady. They still haven't realized that beneath the layers of taffeta and lace, I am not the woman they presume me to be. As we approach the exit, the reality of the situation sets in. I'm being taken hostage, and there's no way out. They push me into their getaway vehicle, and we speed away, leaving behind the safety of the ordinary day I had originally anticipated. 
The news spreads quickly. Security cameras capture every moment, from my confident strut into the store to the dramatic and terrifying exit with the robbers. The images flash across television screens, with newscasters commenting on the young woman in a prom dress taken hostage in a bizarre turn of events at a local dollar store. My friends and family recognize me immediately, despite the dress, but to the wider world, I am just the mysterious prom princess in peril. Social media erupts with concern and curiosity, some praising my bravery, others bewildered by my appearance. The focus on my attire rather than the crime itself adds an extra layer of surrealism to the already absurd situation. As hours turn into a nerve-wracking standoff, the robbers keep their distance, still under the illusion of my femininity, treating me with a confused deference that might not have been afforded to me had they known my true identity. This bizarre respect buys me a semblance of safety amidst the chaos. Finally, after what feels like an eternity, police negotiate our release, and we are freed. Stepping out of the hostage scene, still clad in the shimmering pink dress, the cameras capture my every move. The image of the prom princess hostage becomes iconic, a viral sensation that overshadows the terrifying reality of the ordeal. As the story of the prom princess hostage gains traction, I find myself swept up in a narrative that's quickly outgrowing the simple bet that started it all. The media's fascination with the young woman in the pink dress who bravely faced robbers turns into a series of interview requests, and initially, I decide to play along. Each appearance requires me to step into another beautiful dress, to maintain the illusion that captured the public's imagination. It starts as a game, another layer of the bet, perhaps, a challenge to see how long I can keep it up. My friend, the one who laced me into that first pink dress, finds it all wildly amusing and helps pick out outfits, making sure each one is as stunning as the last. As weeks turn into months, the persona of the prom princess solidifies. Invitations to talk shows, charity events, and even a guest appearance on a popular TV series all request the presence of the brave, beautiful girl from the dollar store incident. Each time I step out in a new gown, I feel the lines between Chris and this newfound persona blurring. The continuous positive reinforcement and acceptance of my alter ego become intoxicating. Everywhere I go, I'm met with applause and admiration, not just for my courage but for my grace and style. I start to enjoy the crafting of this identity, the careful selection of dresses, the way each fabric feels against my skin, the way the camera loves the image I present. During this time, I do a lot of thinking about identity and self-expression. The more I dress and live as this character, the more I realize that this persona allows me to express parts of myself I had never explored or understood before. The line between playing a role and living a truth grows thinner. Eventually, I reach a turning point. On a particularly introspective evening after filming a heartfelt interview where I spoke about the fluidity of identity and courage, I come to understand that this disguise isn't just a mask I put on for the public, it feels like a deeper revelation of who I am. The constant switching between Chris and this prom princess doesn't feel necessary anymore. I don't feel like I'm hiding behind a dress, rather, the dress is revealing a part of me that I hadn't been ready to acknowledge before. I make the decision to embrace this identity fully. It's not about keeping up a disguise anymore, it's about accepting that the person in the mirror with the dresses is as much me as Chris ever was, maybe even more. My announcement on a popular talk show is met with overwhelming support. I share my journey, explaining that what started as a playful dare led me to a profound understanding of my gender identity. As I step into my role not just on television but in everyday life, the transformation feels less like a transition and more like an unveiling. I continue to be an advocate for breaking gender norms and exploring identity in unconventional ways. The dresses, now a signature part of my wardrobe, symbolize not just my past ordeal but my journey towards self-acceptance and the beauty of finding one's true self.